So Ben and I just got back from our vacation. We took a nice little trip down to Disneyland, rode some rides, ate some good food. And while we were down there, saw a whole lot of Lakers jerseys. And that got us thinking, are the Lakers gonna be able to make a run like last year? I mean, we want to see, they're playing pretty well at the moment. They had that stinker against the Warriors, but they need to focus at least just making the playoffs first. But after then, you never know. You got LeBron, you got AD. You could be anyone with those two. Before we start talking about the Lakers, if you haven't already, make sure to leave this video a like, give us a subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on one of our videos. So it is worth mentioning that with the Lakers lost to Golden State on Tuesday, uh, they no longer control their own destiny for the 8th or the ninth seed. They need either the Kings or the Warriors to drop a game or two to have a chance of avoiding the 10th seed. They do have the Grizzlies tonight, who they better <laughs> fucking beat. Uh, if they don't beat them, then boy, they're in trouble. But uh, we're going to go over some of their playoff matchups, but I mean, considering how stacked the Western Conference play is look there's a very real chance they don't even make the playoffs yeah things are looking pretty good prior to that warriors game and then darvin ham throws in that just stinker of a three guard lineup just a terrible performance at, by them at the end of the third quarter <laughs> when the warriors are going on a run to end the quarter i get there's 30 seconds left you don't want to burn a timeout but you lost the game there yeah you, you absolutely did i feel like we're probably gonna get that lakers warriors playing that adam silver wanted but let's talk about the perspective we each have on them so far this season first i'll say I thought they were going to be a much better team. Like, I honestly thought they'd be like a top three seed. Wow. Probably like around the third seed. I mean, they were coming off that great playoff run, that great finish to the season. I really liked their offseason. I thought they had enough depth this year. Probably should have factored in like LeBron and AD. They're going to get injured. But they really have it this year, which is the interesting thing. Yeah, that is true. They've been mostly healthy, but Darvin Ham, I mean, not the best coach. It kind of <laughs> makes sense. So I've definitely been disappointed, but I'm also not shocked. I'm in a weird spot because I've been disappointed, but I've also been pleased with it because I don't like the Lakers. So it really doesn't bother me. Yeah. I mean, I thought they'd be right around the seventh seed again, seventh, eighth seed, because I, I thought AD and LeBron would get hurt, and I thought that would be their downfall. That really hasn't happened, but their supporting cast has not been that great. I mean, Gabe Vincent, I think, was their big offseason signing. Yeah, he's been bad. <laughs> he's been real bad. <laughs> and other than that, I mean, Dinwiddie, Torian Prince, Jackson Hayes. I mean, I guess everyone thought that they would give you more. D'Lo has been really great over the past couple weeks, but I don't know. I'm not super surprised that they're in the play, and I'm a little surprised at the 10th seed, but let's get into some potential opponents, and we're just going to start this off real quick and easy. Denver Nuggets, they're not beating them. They got swept in the conference finals last year. They got swept in the season series this year. Jokic and Michael Malone seem to take an almost sexual amount of relish they from, they love it. from beating the Lakers, so it's not happening. Yeah, for whatever reason, Jokic just has 80s number. Ever since he was hitting those, like, step back over the head launching arcing threes over him they're just not beating them i will say it was so funny when i took my uber out of la yeah. last time there was a lakers fan he was chatting it up and he was hella confident they could beat the nuggets really yeah i was just kind of going like yeah yeah sure sure so yeah we have a word for that in the business it's called delusion <laughs> yeah completely delusional i agree on this one i think maybe they could win a game but i don't think they could win a game <laughs> okay they couldn't last year <laughs> they couldn't last year i think there were some close games in that series like it's a sweep I'm not going to act like the Lakers could have won that series, but some of the games were close. You got LeBron and AD. I'll give them a game, but Jokic has their number. Murray, championship experience. Michael Malone will coach circles around <laughs> Darvin Ham. So I completely agree. If it's Nuggets, it's over in four, maybe five. So under the Minnesota Timberwolves, like inexperience in the playoffs, definitely a little bit of an issue. They don't have no playoff experience like a certain team we'll talk about in just a second. Mike Conley has been in a couple playoff series, gone deep in the playoffs with the Grizzlies. But I mean, the Lakers, they did lose the season series 3-1 and the only game they won was in March where AD put up 27 points in 25 rebounds. Now, Gobert and Cat both did, uh, they didn't miss that game, but shh. You know, not talk about don't, that. Don't, don't talk about that, right? <laughs> yeah, on paper, awful matchup for yeah, the Lakers. Really Lakers bad. rely on points in the paint. Obviously, LeBron and AD, you need points in the paint. Timberwolves obviously are great at stopping players in the paint. And then even if you go out to the perimeter, like, awful matchup for the Lakers again because D'Lo, Reeves, I mean, I guess you got LeBron. You got some, like, decent perimeter players, but then for the Timberwolves, you got Jaden McDaniels, you got Mike Conley, you got Anthony Edwards, an insanely good perimeter defensive team. 
team. So on paper, terrible matchup. I do have some question marks for the Timberwolves. I think playoff experience not necessarily is my question mark. They have enough veterans, but they have a couple guys that haven't necessarily showed up big time in the playoffs. I mean, Cat's had his issues. Go Bear. Go Bear has definitely had his issues. I don't trust this guy. So I think this series could go a bit longer than the Nuggets. I think this could be a six or seven game series. Overall though, I would have to pick the Timberwolves just based on what they've done all season and then mainly just the matchup wise. It's just not a good matchup at all for them. My big concern for the Lakers is that they'd have to rely on AD and LeBron because AD actually has played pretty well against the Wolves throughout this season. So is LeBron. But like if the Lakers need D'Lo to show up like he has been doing over the last couple weeks, D'Lo has been playing really well. Is he going to play that well against Mike Conley, Ant and Jada McDaniels? I mean, just on Sunday when they played the Wolves, D'Lo had one of his worst shooting games of the year. He shot five of 19 from the field. So I think against the Wolves, the Lakers would have to rely on AD and LeBron. And you know what? Maybe they play insanely and they take a couple games off the Wolves. But I think the fact that the Wolves are so great on defense and the Lakers offense has been, let's call it inconsistent throughout the year. <laughs> I, I just, I don't see a world where the Lakers could beat the Wolves. Yeah, D'Lo will have like a couple 30 point games. Then he'll have like an 11 point game where he shoots like three or 14. Yeah, that's D'Lo in the playoffs for you. Now the final team, the Oklahoma City Thunder. And this is the team I think a lot of people are thinking like the Lakers could beat. I mean, obviously playoff experience for the Thunder really isn't there. Shea's been in the playoffs a couple times, not as the main guy, but he's been there. I mean, they had that playing game last year. They played two playing games. So they have some playoff experience and kind of the logic behind this is it's not the worst matchup on paper for the Lakers either. They went three and one in the season series against the Thunder. They have the size with AD. I mean, that's the main downside for the Thunder. They have Chet, they have Jalen Williams as the backup and then not much size behind that. And a lot of people are kind of saying, you know, like compared to the Grizzlies last year, like the Grizzlies were this inexperienced team led by a star guard. Do you think they could beat the Thunder? Look, I think it's the best matchup. If the Lakers had their pick of the litter, it'd be the Thunder. But no, what? I don't think they can no. beat the Thunder. <laughs> the comparison to Memphis last year, I understand why people are making it. But to me, the only similarity with this year's OKC team and last year's Memphis team is that they're both young. And I guess they're both led by a star guard. Last year's Grizzlies team had well-documented internal problems with everything that was going on with Ja, with all his controversies, Dylan Brooks and his antics. I mean, hell, Steven Adams had to essentially sit all the players down mid-season <laughs> and be like, yo, stop partying so much when we're out on the road. We're dropping games because of that. And this was before the first jaw gun incident. So last year's Grizzlies team was a team that had a whole bunch of problems. I mean, OKC, Josh Giddy aside, right. obviously he's the big one, <laughs> right? Outside of that, it's been radio silence from that team in terms of controversies. I mean, yeah, their maturity is like insane for how young they are. Like Shea just seems locked in all the time. Amazing chemistry. And I just have this feeling that like the Thunder really aren't going to be shaken by the moment at all. I don't know what it is. They just really have never seemed scared in any matchup I've seen. Playing game last year, I know it's the play-in, but that game against the Pelicans, I mean, Shea and Giddy showed out. I think people are sleeping on the Thunder a little bit. They've had one of the best net ratings all season. They've been like a top five defensive and offensive team. So I think, again, this series probably goes six. I would pick the Thunder. Could go seven. I think maybe the Lakers squeak it out in seven, but another one, I, I would have to pick the Thunder. Yeah, I mean, conventional wisdom would tell you that the Lakers maybe would be able to exploit OKC's lack of size in the paint a little bit. People gotta realize the Thunder, they're seventh in the league in opponents' points in the paint. Yeah. They're a top 10 team in opponents' points in the paint. And I know Chet's a little skinny, but he's still one of the best young defensive bigs in the league. Like, AD has played well enough against him, but I don't think Chet's gonna get cooked by him or anything. And then flip it around. Who on the Lakers is stopping Shea? Yeah. Or Jalen Williams? <laughs> like, you put D'Lo in front of Shea, that's barbecue chicken all day, every day. <laughs> yeah, the thing is they need Jared Vanderbilt to come back. Oh, I, yeah. It looks like he may come back right before the play, and they definitely need him to guard Shea, because besides that, like, I was looking at the footage from their most recent game, which they did win, but they were, yeah, putting, like, Austin Reeves on Shea. They were putting D'Lo on Shea. If they don't get Jared Vanderbilt back for a series against the Thunder, Shea's cooking them. Yeah, yeah. Easily. And, like, for anyone who wants to call Shea, like, a free throw merchant and that that's not gonna continue in the playoffs, he's not gonna get all those same calls, okay, sure, but then you have to ignore the fact that the Lakers are second in the NBA and free throws <laughs> attempted. And they've had that huge margin that everyone's always talking about on Twitter. The Lakers are not going to be getting to the free throw line as much of the playoffs as they do in the regular season either. Yeah, I'm not worried about Shea come playoff time. Maybe the free throws drop a little bit, but the dude's a bucket. And it's not like he's this guy where he has to get to the free throw 
free-throw line. Outside of free throws, he's still insanely efficient, so I'm not worried about him at all, especially when it might be D'Lo or Austin Reeves guarding him. In conclusion, I get why people are gassing up the Lakers, and I mean, maybe I'm just being a hater, but I don't think this team has any chance to win the title. Like, maybe this is just a personal thing with me, though, but I find that everyone who's gassing them up and is being like, oh, they can make a run, they always do it by talking about, like, oh, OKC okay, in Minnesota, you know, they don't got any experience or whatnot. Like, to me, that's a tell. <laughs> Yeah. Because if you got to put down OKC or Minnesota to talk up the Lakers, generally means the Lakers aren't that good. Because if they were, you'd tell me what they do well. I mean, they're they're just passable at everything. The only thing they really excel at is getting to the free throw line. And that's not as valuable in the playoffs as it is in the regular season. I mean, you are being a hater a bit. I, as fine, expected. Fair enough. I'm take, I'll sit happens. with that label easily. My only thing is I'll say they're dangerous. I don't expect them to win the title. I don't really think that's possible with their seating and everything. But at the same time, I mean, I mean, last year, they still made the conference finals. They did get swept, but they made it. They have LeBron James. They have Anthony Davis. They have all the experience in the world. They can make a run. I wouldn't be surprised if they beat the Thunder and the Timberwolves, but I think that's about it. They're a second round exit. Best case scenario, they somehow make the conference finals and lose to the Nuggets or something. But that's about all they are. Just, just a little bit dangerous. That's the video, guys. How dangerous do that's the video, guys. How dangerous do you think the Lakers are this year? I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like, as it really does help us out. And while you're here, why not check out some of our other videos as well? And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.